All right, I was going to do a quick five minute talk, and I wasn't sure what to talk about, so I thought I'd talk about GUR. GUR. Uh, so this is, this is something I don't know much about, which is why I thought it would be good for a five minute talk. Um, <laughs> This is what our, uh, this, it, GUR, it stands for GUR Rapid Response. <laughs> all the way down, it's, it's all the way down. Um, it's, an incident res, it's an incident response framework uh, used for security engineers to do sort of crazy work. Uh, live forensics is what it can do, or mostly live, pretty live. Um, you, if you have, in, you know, InfoSec teams in your companies, or you are the InfoSec team, then this is a great tool to at least look into or play around with. Maybe it won't work in all, your, in all the cases, but it's got some pretty good stuff. It's all open source. Uh, it's written in Python, both the server side and all of the clients. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, scalable, scriptable, a client server model. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, it does all sorts of amazing things. There's uh, artifact collection. So if you're doing forensics and you have some new piece of malware and you want to look across your fleets, get the bits of malware that you see, find the, find the bits of code it might have, uh, it, that it might have touched and changed, collect those artifacts. Uh, this can do that for you. Uh, file search, registry search, if, you're doing, if you support Windows machines. Uh, the craziest thing this can do is live memory analysis. So you can do a, a hunt or a search across all of your machines and search the memory for some string or some blob of data and see if they've been affected by this whatever crazy piece of malware. Again, this is stuff I barely understand, which is why I thought five minutes, that's about right. Um, so like for example, it, the live forensics part is great. Uh, it's all very low. Uh, Low bandwidth, low low throughput. They have a very very restrictive set of um, limits on the client itself. It watches the memory usage, it watches the CPU usage, and it kills itself if it goes over uh, uh, some fairly low limits. Uh, the actual data it sends back, it uses um, uh, protobufs, which is uh, Google lives and dies on protobufs internally. Sort of, uh, it's like it's what XML and JSON should be, except that it's nice. Uh, so it's compressed, so the, all the data it sends back is very small. But if, if Matt is on a boat somewhere in the South, you know, the South Pacific and he sees some weird thing ran on his machine, he's concerned about it, he calls security people, well, you don't have to like, ship the laptop back from Southeast Asia all the way. It's very difficult to do. So you can use GUR to sort of investigate these things remotely. Uh, this is not remote control. It doesn't execute arbitrary commands on the host. It's more just looking for specific things, uh, specific bits of uh, data you can get. You can set it up to do specific uh, commands, but it requires like a whole sort of you have to get the command specifically set up in the YAML file, sign the binary with the GUR certificate, and it's, that sends it down to the, to the host to then be executed. So it's, they try to be very careful about not using this for actual sort of you don't, they don't want this to turn into a command and control for the actual evil people to use. Um, so, pretty, pretty simple. I don't have any clients. This is a Docker instance on my machine, or the SFU banner. Uh, all of the binaries, it comes with them. You just, whoops, uh, Django. Um, executables, Darwin. Uh, installers. So you just have this thing. This is signed. Uh, when you set up the, the GUR console, uh, it sets up a, a local CA. You can override this with your own. Again, this is just sort of the Docker demo test image. Um, you download the, uh, download the file here. Uh, I've already done that, but the, the client itself is signed with the certs and will only talk. It's pre-configured to only talk to the instance of the server that you have it uh, downloaded from. So somewhere here I have, you can watch me type my password seven times in a row. <sighs> All right, so normally you won't see this. this uh, when you install the package, it runs as a launch daemon, a bunch of stuff happens in the background, and it's, it's all magic. I've run this in sort of foreground mode with debug logging so you can kind of see all the bits. I've also told it uh, to do the minimum time to pull or the maximum time to, to, the maximum time to wait between pulling intervals is now 10 seconds. 
So it's going to do a lot of crazy stuff. You can kind of ignore most of this. Uh, but now if I go to the search box and I look, I have, oh, look. Look, my machine showed up. So you can do, from here, there's a virtual file system they create from all of the data it gets from the machine, which, as you might imagine, has all sorts of crazy tasks. It's, uh, yeah. I don't even know what all this is. I should probably not show you some of this. Um, <laughs> it's good. I'm fine. Do anything you want on your last day. Um, uh, yeah, so again, like you see, you, you can look and it, it, it does a quick, it doesn't show the data of, it doesn't get the contents of all of the, the hard drive. It just gets like a, a few things sort of pre-populated to go with. Uh, and, and you can do these, um, but if you, want to, if you wanted to look, I could say what's in my home directory. Hopefully nothing bizarre, but I do refresh. Uh, you might have seen the background sort of flipping by real quick because it, it checked in after 10 seconds. And, oh, all right, I'll give you a, a list of everything in my home directory, and then that's that. So uh, this is all fine and good for, for one machine. Um, they have these things called flows, um, which is basically a, a, a task you do on one machine. Uh, again, you can do like memory. It's, this blows my mind. Like memory searches. I, I, don't, I did this before, but I forgot how it worked. Memory collection. Yeah, conditions, literal match. Probably has my name somewhere in here. First hit, da, da, da. action, none. Don't need to download everything. You could download the contents of the memory. It, I mean, it's insane. Um, launch is probably going to run and then tell me. Launch flows. This is what it's done. So you can see the launch flows on this on the client again. My local host. It's it interrogated, which is just get the sort of normal data, VFS. I asked it to get to list the directory, so it did that. And now memory collection uh, probably is done. Yeah. Look results. Yes, we had one. It did, have, it did find some stuff at that location, and it's that long. Uh, so you can do, if you, do, if you want to do uh, flows, basically, across all of your machines, which in this case is one, so it's not going to be very interesting, but you can do flows across, the whole, uh, across your whole fleet. And of course, this can work on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Uh, same sort of thing. You just pick the thing you want to do. We can, let's do a network, net stats. Sure, why not? Um, so the client limit. So this is, uh, uh, the client rate is interesting. This is how many clients to schedule to do this, to execute this on every minute. Uh, so they try to be very good to like not hammer your own the the server instance as well. So if it's a very low priority thing, you can have a uh, you know a, a low number of clients. If you, if you said zero, it basically does them all at once, which is maybe if you're like you know it's pants on fire kind of emergency, you really want to figure out get all these uh, friends collected. So we'll run this. It'll be kind of boring. Um, you can I'll show you. There's some outputs. If you just want to get the data uh, CSV, there's a BigQuery database, things like that. I don't, I don't really care about the output in this. So I'll just do no output. It'll show you in the uh, UI. Uh, I don't know oh, when those let's run out there. All right. So we've created the hunt. So that's, you'll notice it's paused. So by default, in the demo, it's just one admin, and the admin can start and do anything uh, by themselves without any uh, approval. If you set this up in production, uh, you can set it up with uh, obviously multiple admins, uh, multiple accounts, and everything will require like a, another, a different person to approve all the things. So you can have a hunt here. Now I can start it. It'll uh, proceed. And normally this would be someone else who would do it. Uh, we can watch here. Probably some stuff will fly by in less than 10 seconds somewhere. Wait for it there. All right. Um, so da, da, I'm trying to think. There's probably one that went by with some data, but oh, there it is. So here it, it sent 572 things, widgets, frobs, um, which we'll look back. You can look back at the hunt manager. Uh, it shows it's still running, but you can see the results as they come in. And just like magic, all of the net stat for my host. Anyway, uh, this, this was something our uh, engineering team, our software 
sorry, our security team uses uh, to manage malware across the fleet uh, to do uh, in forensics and, and all sorts of other crazy banana stuff like live memory. It's insane. Anyway, it's very low. Uh, I think the, the code for the client uh, is interesting to look at because they have a lot of interesting uh, techniques to restrict the, the client to be uh, a very good sort of uh, citizen of the OS and not take over too many resources. You look at the client code, it's interesting. And again, this is all open source, uh, all pretty cool. I, I hope it was interesting. I, don't ha I, can, I can answer questions, but I probably don't know. But you can go ahead. <laughs> Right, so we... Uh, Repeat the question. Yes, uh, it is deployed by policy on every machine. Uh, the way we work with them is we, they give us the, the package that comes out of their console, and we push that with Monkey. And then we have Puppet make sure it stays running. They also make sure it stays running. And we have like a sort of a you know, mutually assured destruction thing. Like we're not going to undo their thing, and they're not going to undo our things. Um, we did ask them to have uh, sort of a break glass you know, install this package and run Puppet for us sort of thing just in case, because, you know, it's like a, you know, we have, you know, if you've heard me talk about this before, we have, you know, Puppet controls Monkey and Monkey controls Puppet, and we have Plan B underneath to make sure that they both keep running. But if, I don't know, something horribly terrible goes, do we have, this is sort of like Plan C. This is like, all right, let's, you know, push the big red button, call the room. Um, so, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, we deploy it everywhere, uh, well, not we, but the, the platforms teams do. Yeah. 